please visit sleepapia.org to get more videos like this one, as well as audio and blog content. Join us at sleepapnea.org to be included in the conversation and updated whenever new programs are available. Thanks for joining us and enjoy. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to sleepapnea.org's Tuesday speaker series. We're excited to have you join us today. We have our team on live chats on Facebook and YouTube. And today I have uh, my team member, Teresa Schumar, here with me. Um, many of you might not know that Teresa has a long career uh, in the sleep field. She started out as a respiratory technician, became a sleep technician, um, moved into writing curriculum for patients and professionals uh, in regards to sleep and sleep apnea. And, you know, has also done various types of uh, writings and articles throughout her career. We're so happy that she's part of our sleepapnea.org team because she's very patient focused. Uh, she serves on our board and we're excited to have her as our community manager and education leader. So hi, Teresa. Thanks for joining me today. Hi. Thanks, Justine. That was that was glowing. I, I have to live up to this now. <laughs> oh, you do. You do on a daily basis. You help us out and all of our patients out there and all the different types of uh, online communities that we have. We're so happy to have you here with us today. Thank you. So today, Teresa and I are going to talk a little bit about the most common questions that we get coming at um, sleepapnea.org. Uh, these were taken, uh, these questions we mostly get when people call our 800 number. Um, and we thought that we would talk to our community about them today on this speaker series because, you know, they're so common, right, Teresa? I mean, we, we hear them every day when the telephone calls come in. And um, it's important because they, they're a little bit starting in the beginning of, of an individual's journey. Maybe they've just been diagnosed or they just got their CPAP mm -hmm. machine. Um, and, but this is important information. You know, our patient community uh, goes from those that are looking to get diagnosed all the way to the experts that are trying to figure out what to do with their data and everybody in between. Um, so um, I'm going to lead off here asking um, Teresa the uh, most common question that we get is, um, I was just diagnosed, what is next? What is the plan? What do I need to do? And I'll leave that for you, with you, Teresa, to go ahead and answer. Okay. Well, if you haven't already, you know, make a, a deep dive into what your therapy entails and what sleep apnea is all about, do so. Educate yourself as soon as you can. Uh, the internet has many good places to get information. Um, if you ever um, need to, you can come to our website. We have a lot of information there at sleepapnea.org. Or you could do a search, say for instance, do one so that you're not hitting maybe commercial sites, hit up a, uh, a search that says sleep apnea and then put dot gov g o v that will give you what uh, is present within the nih the cdc that sort of thing so it's you know reliable and trusted information uh and and education and that's that's really the first line of defense with this is educate yourself about what you have and you might be a little sleepy, you know, <laughs> because you're just starting with your therapy uh, and maybe it's not going just perfectly yet, but just do educate yourself and uh, do connect with other people that have it. And in that way, we're going to talk about some of those things uh, that we offer that you could hook into and have, have an easier time with it. So most people follow the course, um, you know, of having a sleep study uh, in the lab. And um, sometimes, and I know COVID's going on right now and a lot of uh, medical uh, uh, practices have, have changed, but um, you're having your in-lab study, maybe they're titrating you, which is um, where they're figuring out what pressures to set your machine at. Um, so maybe they do those both together, or maybe you have to go twice. Um, kind of depends on 
you know, variety of things. Again, we're dealing with COVID, could also be your insurance. And there's a few factors there, but those things happen. Then you're, uh, then you're going back to your doctor with your sleep study results and they are prescribing you uh, uh, a CPAP machine or, or some type of PAP machine. What are the different types of PAP machines that are there, Teresa, just to let people know? You could have an APAP, which is an auto titrating CPAP machine, or you could have a bi-level, which are two different pressures. One is, is, is uh, for inspiration and the other is for expiration, which is exhalation. Not that you're going to expire. I, I remember when I first heard that, I thought, expiration? You know, no, it doesn't mean that. It means, you know, that you're exhaling. And maybe the pressure is going to be a little bit lower on the exhalation in bi-level. And that, it, uh, it helps to have the patient exhale. It, 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 it helps them to go easy on it. And it's, it's sort of like explaining sometimes people have the sensation of they put their head out the window of a car and they're going 60 miles an hour and they can't catch a breath. Well, that's what a bi-level will do. Mm -hmm. um, the other uh, machine you could have is a continuous positive airway pressure machine, which is CPAP. And that's really the most common acronym used. Somebody might say CPAP, but maybe in, in reality, they have an APAP. Um, so yeah, like an APAP is going to reach what you need. Like if you are stopping breathing, it's going to know that and it's going to give you the pressure that you need there. Yeah. So yeah, so you have uh, the APAP, the CPAP, and the bi-level therapy. And your your doctor uh, more than likely is choosing which type of therapy based on the Absolutely. results of your sleep study. And, Absolutely. And then um, under most circumstances, now all this is depends on your insurance, which we all know about, is that um, you know you would be working either with a DME or an HME to get this medical equipment, the CPAP machine, the th one of the three different kinds that you described. What does DME and HME stand for? Durable medical equipment and home medical equipment. Okay. okay, great. Yeah, I know there's so many terms that get thrown around. Sometimes people get a little confused. Well, and then you have them online too. There, it might not be a brick and mortar uh, store. It might be an online that, you know, you have to send your prescription in and to them and, you know, they take care of you. Yeah, yeah. So hopefully, uh, Teresa was talking a little bit before about, you know, educating yourself in regards to the condition and, and the various treatments that you're using. And so hopefully you're getting some information and training from your doctor or from your DME, HME. But if you, you know, if you feel like it's lacking, that's what sleepapnea.org is all about. We're a patient community. You know, like Teresa said, we have online forums. We're on Facebook. You know, right now we're having this live chat with our, uh, all of our team team members on YouTube and Facebook. You can ask questions and get some answers. Um, we have lots of videos and stuff on Facebook that you can reference and learn from. So, you know, if you're, if you're looking for that information, uh, it's possible that, you know, that we have it or that someone in our community can help, you know, help tell their story and how they overcome that situation uh, or answer your questions. So it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a good resource, like she said, to just keep, make sure you're educating yourself. And you know, you might've had, you might've had a session with your DME or you might've had a session of education at the lab, but you might get to the actual time where you're putting it on maybe for the fourth time and something isn't right something just isn't going well for you in your therapy you have another question or maybe you forgot what they told you it's okay you know nobody expects you to understand every single aspect of it that's why educating yourself is so important yeah yeah um kind of 
yeah, a little bit based on, on, on this on this topic, Teresa, is um, we often get a lot of questions too. We talked a little bit about uh, starting with an in-lab study and then going through the process. Uh, we also get a lot of questions about, you know, how are our home sleep studies? And so it just kind of changes that, that, that beginning portion, one's in lab, and now we have these at-home studies. You wanna talk a little bit about, about the rest of the part is basically the same, but the beginning part is a little different. With, with an in-lab study, you're going to have many more measurements that are in consideration. You're gonna have brain waves, you're gonna have muscle, uh, readings, you're going to have leg and arm readings sometimes. Sometimes you'll have esophageal reflux uh, readings. You know, they're very, um, you know, very many channels, as we call them, on the polysomnogram, which is what it's called when you're going into the lab and, uh, you know, those folks take care of you that way. You might because you are presenting with a, a significant complaint of snoring, stopping breathing, those kinds of things. And maybe there's no time, especially now with COVID, to get you into a lab like that. Um, they might just do the home sleep study and that's what that is good for. You will know when you are done with the home sleep study you know, somebody's going to tell you whether you have it or not, sleep apnea. Um, it would not, it, it would not uh, give you readings on some other parameters. Say, for instance, we talked about restless legs uh, uh, measurement, which, you know, is another, there's, there's over 80 sleep disorders. So the lab is, is uh, very capable of diagnosing all of them. But in the sleep apnea case, the home sleep test is very good. Uh, and a lot of the labs actually send you with those. So it's, it's, it's being um, scored by the lab people who are, you know, great at knowing what they're doing, they're licensed, everything. Um, they, they, you know, they can, uh, they can take that for you to, you know, whatever level. But the home sleep study might just be enough to get a reading on you having pauses in breath. And that's what you're looking for to get your CPAP machine uh, yeah. uh, or your oral appliance or whatever therapy your doctor and you are choosing. Right, right. Yeah, we, you know, um, in regards to the, the home studies, I mean, a lot of people too are very, you know, anxious maybe now, you know, with COVID going on and or just so concerned about being in a lab, all these wires, I'm not, I'm not going to be comfortable. And, you know, it, talk to your doctor about that. Um, you know, I mean, there's nothing wrong with starting one place and, and determining, okay, well, maybe this yeah. didn't give us the information we needed. Now we have to go somewhere else. You can always do something along, you know, those lines as well. I mean, so, um, so yeah, just, you know, continue to work with your doctor uh, and, uh, and figure out what, what testing is right for you and then what um, treatment option is right for you uh, and come to us whenever you need mm -hmm. some help and, and reach out, you know, to, to, to other people people that you know that maybe have CPAP machines and, and you know, um, sometimes people like to talk about it. Some people don't like to talk about, about the, how they use it. But even if someone, you know, in, in, you know, in your family and friends that maybe not be that open, if I'm sure if you ask them, you know, uh, questions, they'd be more happy to share their experience, you know, with you. Yeah. Um, another comment. And you know, if you, if you don't tell your doctor I'm having this problem with my legs or while I'm sleeping or I'm having, you know, vivid dreams and I'm, I'm smacking my bed partner or whatever, you know, whatever your symptoms are during your sleep that you happen to know about, share that with your doctor. That will help him to decide, gee, this, this person needs to be in the lab because we're going to look at all these other disorders. You know, we have the capability of looking at all these other disorders to rule that out. Uh, if your complaint is 
you know, you're tired and you know, you've witnessed to witnessed apnea, you know, you're you're a shoe in for a home sleep test there. I yeah. mean just, just, whatever it happens to be, just do it. You know, yeah. get it, get it you know right yeah exactly get the study right exactly because that's that's the first hurt that's the first hurdle you have to cross over mm -hmm. to start feeling a lot better yeah mm -hmm. um another really common question that we get has to do with cleaning um you want to talk about you know once you get the machine you've had the study you get the machine you get some training on it you're using it and then you know it comes with all these different parts there's a hose there's a uh, or a tube and, and a mask and headgear and filters people don't even know that there's filters in there <laughs> Sometimes they don't know that there are filters in there that need to be changed. Yeah. But you know, the cleaning, we have, we have that resource for people. It's so simple. And you actually were the, the subject of, of our video that we offer. And it's free for anyone to look at. It's, it, it, it goes through the steps of cleaning the, the, the actual mask and the different parts and the tubing and that sort of thing and how you dry them and very simple very yeah. simple yeah and it's all over our properties as far as social media our website uh we have it in the facebook support group the mm -hmm. sleep health support group so yeah 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 and it's really important because um one thing is is if you know taking care of your machine and taking care of the you know the, the the plastic accessories that that you need to use with it it does help uh it, it helps them to last the the length of time that they should you know like if you if you you know never clean out your coffee mug it looks really really bad inside after a week uh and then just imagine that you know having coffee out of it every day and you never washed it for three months it's kind of you know not looking ew. so good yeah ooh is right and so you know by by wiping off your mask rinsing the hose rinsing it out even you know washing the headgear which is a little bit of elastic mm -hmm. you know you you know you have oil everyone has oils and 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 you know and and you're you're wearing it all night every night and so by cleaning it off it makes it last a, a little bit longer um but Teresa, let and, and the therapy is more effective because if you've worn down the, the, the silicone or whatever your mask is made of, if you've had a lot of wearing of the mask, you're gonna have a lot of facial oils on there and that actually breaks down the materials. So it's not gonna be as effective in keeping this all, all taken care of with CPAP. Yeah. That's, that's my, I know, I know when it's time to change my mask because, um, mm -hmm. I start to leak, you know, I get a little mm -hmm. thing over here and I get a little thing over here and I'm like, I wonder when I change this. And like, you know, sometimes I write it down, sometimes I don't. But then once, once I get like two little leaks, I'm like, oh, that's it. I, it's, it's, it's probably <laughs> been time. And now yes, it's, it's absolutely. Um, yeah. But let, so let's talk about that for a minute. Like how often are you supposed to change these things? We talked about cleaning them sometimes, you know, wiping it down daily, rinsing it every couple of days and so forth. What about actually changing it, changing the mask and, and the filter and all that other kind of stuff? There again, it depends on your insurance coverage, but it's usually a couple of, a couple a year, at least two a year. Some have three a year some or more. Now, if it's uh, say that you're using the mask that is inserted into the nose with the uh, sort of the little rubber pieces that are on there, um, we call those nasal pillows. And those pillows are changed at least once a month because you know, the debris and everything from the nose, it's, it's going to wear it down and they're not going to be effective. They're going to leak. They could cause you some irritation on your skin and, you know, yeah. so yeah, it's, it's a good idea to get familiar with your equipment and your manufacturer 
You yeah, know, I mean, you can, if you, you know, if you, if you can't get any information for, you know, from your, your DME knows how much you're supposed to change it or your HME that yes, we talked they before, know. they know, they know, they can, they can look at your insurance and what the manufacturer, mm -hmm. sh manufacturer says and, and help you out with that. Um, but if, you know, sometimes that's a little bit lagging, as we all know, we can't get the information mm -hmm. from the professionals that we uh, need when we need it, um, you know, you can you can just go online just go online and google it and what type of mask it is and boom the instruction manual will pop up and it'll tell you because my the full face mask that i use uh is actually a it's like a foam that touches my face so i have to change it like you were saying for the nasal pillows once a month because you can't you can't wash it i mean you can wipe the inside the hard plastic right yeah you can't wash like it's like a, one of those foam memory pillows you can't you can't yeah. wash that and so that's what i said i know when i start to get those little fuzzy leaks and my one coming out my eye <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's time. It's time to do that. And I think we should just point out one more time because this was something that was uh, pointed out to us by, you know, our team that talks with the patients a lot, that um, filter. There is a, there's a little, whatever type of a machine you have, there's something on the side or back. So usually a little rectangle and it pops down and there looks, it's like a little cotton pad. It's not a cotton pad, but it looks like one. And it's, it's a filter and there's different types for different machines, but, mm -hmm. but um, you know, you definitely should change that. That's for sure. Because you would be surprised if you leave it in there for a year and then you open it and you go, Oh, oh wow. Look at this. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah. It's like that coffee mug I talked about earlier. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, so um, let's talk a little bit about, so, you, you know, if, if you're having trouble with the mask and stuff, where can people go, Teresa, to, you know, if they're, if they're struggling a little bit with getting information from their doctor in their or their, or their um, durable medical equipment company, where can they come? What, what type of resources does sleepapnea.org have that they can, uh, a patient can get some information from? We have a, uh, if you go to our homepage, there's a little drop down menu and it will say forum. Um, and you can go in there and talk with other people. Not, it's not live, it's not like you're chatting with them or anything like that. But you are leaving your message and then someone will come along maybe instantly and answer it for you or you know, give their opinion or whatever. And that's, that's very helpful. Um, we have a group, if you're a Facebook person, we are on, we're on all social media. Uh, you can find us just about any, you know, any platform out there, but we have a very active group on Facebook and it's called Awake Sleep Health. Uh, if you just put that into the chat, uh, into the search field, you'll come up with us and you have to answer three questions. That's for security because of the robots and, and all the spamming, spamming that goes on on the internet. So we keep our people safe in there. And uh, they're very, very wonderful people that will come in and answer someone's question. We get newbies all the time. And they, maybe someone asked that question just a week ago. Well, they didn't, they weren't here then. You know, they didn't know. We don't care. We want you to ask and we, we don't care how many times you post it, you know, so. Yeah. Well, you know, the interesting thing too about, um, you know, so if you're not a Facebook user, there's the uh, Awake Forum on our, uh, on our website that Teresa mentioned. And, you know, they're all of the history uh, of past conversations about mask leaks and cleaning and what does my AHI mean and all that type of stuff is there as well. So it's a great resource. You know, you, your question probably is not that different than somebody that they had mm -hmm. last week, last month, a year ago, if you're starting out. And mm -hmm. so it's a great way to just, you know, get some information in there. And, mm -hmm. and like Teresa said, if you want to jump in and join the conversation, just, you know, type in your question and, you know, maybe, especially on the, a little bit faster, probably on Facebook, but on the forum, yeah. you know, 
maybe instant, maybe the next day, you get some someone answering in there uh, uh, to, to help you out with, uh, with, mm -hmm. with the question that you have. So, and then there's just a lot of general resources on, on, our, Absolutely. Um, on our website as well. And, and, and YouTube, we have tons of videos, you know, talking about oh, yeah. various patient stories and their journeys and, you know, so find one that, that, that matches you and, and I'm sure there's some tidbits in there for, for you to, uh, to gain and learn from. And, you know, that's another place there and the forum and our main site, our main page on um, Facebook and Instagram, whatever, you know, you can put in like say you're having a problem with a leak you could just put that word in and search it out uh maybe maybe it's i feel claustrophobic put that put claustrophobic in there it's going to it's going to populate and give you anybody that talked about leaks it's going to show up for you so you can yeah. you know read it yeah yeah, both communities are very engaging, very helpful, mm -hmm. and they're there, you know, they're there for each other. Um, you know, you have the, the newbies and the experienced and everybody is working together to, you know, get a good night's sleep, improve their mm -hmm. quality of life and, and just feel better. And, you know, our people are very polite too. Like we don't, I don't know, we don't have a lot of problems at all. Mm -hmm. I don't recall, mm -hmm. you know, any problems with anybody that, you know, we had to say, you know, hey, don't don't say that or don't, you know, don't like hurt that. somebody's yeah. feelings or something. Yeah. We don't have that. We have mature adults and they, they seem to just really want to help their, yeah. their peers. And we even have, we even have moms and, and dads that come in that they have a little child that's wearing CPAP or they're having some sort of sleep therapy and you know they they welcome them and, and i'm just so glad to see that yeah yeah great well teresa do you have anything to add before we wrap up today no i think we pretty <laughs> we covered much a lot, covered yeah. it all. Yeah. yeah those those questions come in and you know we we don't say oh not that again you know it's part of the newbie experience i mean yeah. and that's what we're there for yep Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. So, you know, we invite everybody to, you know, uh, share, tell your family and friends if, you know, they've been recently diagnosed Absolutely. or concerned about, you know, having sleep apnea, point them over to, to our, to our website, to us on Facebook, our, our group, our, our forum that we have on our website. You know, we are here as a resource for you. Oh, you know what, Teresa, we forgot to mention when we were talking about the masks, about our mask program still yes. being up and running. Yes. Um, so we'll just sneak this here <laughs> at the end before we go, <laughs> that um, when you go on our website, we do have our mask program uh, where to, you know, help individuals that, you know, uh, maybe don't have any insurance or can't afford the, the, the copay or the deductible that has to do with some of their uh, supplies. We do have a program and some things that are available, uh, you know, on our website from donations uh, made by manufacturers. I mean, manufacturers had given us some, um, um, accessories and then you know we're able to get them in the hands of people that need them so we still have that program running so when we were talking about the cleaning and the changing and all that other kind of stuff I mean we don't have everything we're not a DME we're not you know uh, a, a, that type of, of service to provide but we have what we have and if it's useful for you know individuals we want we want to get it in your hands to help you be successful yeah. with your with your therapy so um, well, that's it. I, I hope that everybody, um, you know, joins us uh, uh, next time on our speaker series and um, check us out on the website and on social media. And I'm happy to have Teresa here with me today. And thank you so much. Have a good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for joining us today. Be an awake angel and you can help those financially impacted by COVID-19. Just $50 can provide two CPAP masks to someone in need. Please visit sleephappia.org slash donate for details. The ASAA is a patient-focused organization. Please like and subscribe to our YouTube page, join us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, or sleepapnea.org and you can join the conversation. It's all free.